Good morning. Good morning. Gee, it's great to start your day with coffee with karma today. Happy Friday. And today I've got a treat for you because I don't want you to get whacked by the hidden costs of self-publishing because, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, those self-publishing costs could take you for a ride, just like in Goodfellas, which is the inspiration of today's tips. Hi, my name is Karma Spence, and I help executive coaches, business leaders, and consultants write, publish, and market client-attracting books so that they can grow their businesses. If you're watching this on YouTube, please ring the bell, subscribe to my channel, and like this video, because that helps me reach and help more people. It's so appreciated. Now, let's get to five tips inspired by Goodfellas that will help you avoid the hidden costs of self-publishing. Tip number one, editing costs can vary widely. And although there is some truth to what you pay for is what you get, it's not always the case. I had, I've had editors who were rather inexpensive do wonderful job and editors that were not so inexpensive do a terrible job. So it's really more about what can your budget afford and then find the best editor you can for that price. Now, I don't recommend going to Fiverr unless someone recommends someone on Fiverr because there's some really good professionals on Fiverr, but it's really hard to find them unless you know someone who's actually used their services. So basically <laughs> in the world of editing, you need to know who's loyal and who's going to make you pay for every little thing. <laughs> Just like picking your crew. Don't get taken for a ride by a slick talking editor. Make sure you know the real price up front or you'll be out of more than just a couple of commas. <laughs> I had fun with this, this one. So what? here's what I usually do to find an editor. Now I happen to run in circles of people who do editing. So I often know like personally the people who edit my work. But not always. Sometimes those people are not available and I have to go with someone else. So you, the next step, if you don't know the editor already because of networking and so forth or friends, then the next level is who do you know who might know editors? Like maybe you have a copywriter in your circle who might know a good editor. That's how I got the editor for, the, for some of the books I did this year. Um, maybe you know another author. Another good way is in the um, the dedications at the beginning of books, they'll often name their editor. That's another good way. And of course, uh, another excellent way is to go to a professional organization of editors. I have found one that has a really nice database and tells you a lot about each of the editors in their membership. I will drop the link in the show notes when, it, when I put it up on my, my blog. Tip number two, the true cost of cover design. So you think your cover is just about looking good, right? Well, here's the thing. Just like in Goodfellas, well, appearances aren't everything. A bad cover is like wearing the wrong suit to the meeting with a boss. No one's taking you seriously. <laughs> Invest where it counts or you'll regret it. Now that said, it doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg. I often use 99designs, which for like $300, you can get a really, really professional cover. Uh, there is another company that does it as well that I have purchased, but I haven't used yet. So I can't speak to how, what the or quality is, but the, the pictures they show as part of their portfolio look awesome. And every once in a while they have a sale, I will drop a link to both those in the show notes and occasionally you can find someone good on Fiverr again buyer beware and of course if you're DIYing it Canva has some really good templates that you can 
modify the colors, maybe make it your font, put a different image in and the book is yours. So although it doesn't have to cost an arm or a leg, it can. Just buyer beware, buyer beware. Tip number three, formatting isn't always free. Now I use Abacus for most of my formatting these days and it's not free because I do pay for the software, but it's freer. <laughs> now there are different ways you can bring the cost down. It, you can go with a really professional company, which is what I did for public speaking superpowers. That was probably the most money I've spent on, on design, interior design. And I thought it looked fantastic. And they were able to put images in that I wouldn't have been able to figure out other, otherwise. Um, they're called Rocket something. I will put that in the show notes too. They're, they're a good company, but they aren't cheap. They're not like wildly expensive, but they're not cheap either. But they're a very good company. Um, also, you can do a 99designs uh, contest and get get a really good design for $300. That's what I did with the second. In fact, the cover and the interior were both done by designers I found using a 99design contest for the second edition of 50, uh, not 57 Secrets, um, Home Sweet Homepage. Home Sweet Homepage. So there are some costs involved, but they don't have to be astronomical. Tip number four, marketing expenses beyond the launch. You think you're out once the book's done, but no, just like good fellas, you gotta keep paying to stay in the game. <laughs> launch is just the beginning. And if you want to keep m making collections, AKA sales, you better have a solid marketing plan in place. Otherwise, you're yesterday's news. Now, I've got you here. For under $2, you can go and get the Kindle version of my latest book, Serve Up Your Book, and it tells you everything you need to know about marketing from idea all the way to launch and beyond. It gives you ideas of what you need to be doing in each phase. And at the end of the book, there's an entire marketing plan template that you can use to help you come up with your own marketing plan. And of course, if you need help there, I am always here in your corner. Just set up a curious conversation with karma at karmaspence.com forward slash schedule. So there you go. Um, basically, market your book until it's irrelevant. There you go. That's that's what I'm that's my philosophy and I'm sticking to it. <clears throat> now to tip number five. Time as a hidden expense. Your time is valuable. In this game, time is money. And money can sometimes be everything. Just like Henry Hills said, for us to live any other way was nuts. If you don't manage your time, you're going to be running late on everything. And that's when mistakes happen. Keep track of your hours or you'll be paying in more ways than one. And sometimes it is better to invest in someone else doing a task than you doing it because you're paying less money for that same task. Just saying, manage your time. Outsource when it is more cost effective and, of course, less crazy making. <laughs> there, as you can see from today's episode, there are costs involved with writing and launching a book, but you can keep them in check if you're managing them, tracking them, because if you don't track them, all of a sudden you've spent $10,000 and you're like, where did that money go? <laughs> So there you go. Five tips inspired by Goodfellas to help you not get whacked by the co hidden costs of self-publishing. This is Karma Spence saying, ciao for now.